Hey, this is Mark Friedman from Tulip. I'm, I'm going to show you a really quick uh, app building technique called looping. So in this example here, I'm going to show you it working first. I can create a new order. It's just going to randomly create an order in an order table. And if I push this button, I'm going to create a line in the order lines table. And what that's going to do is link these together. And you'll notice that their status, each of the status of these lines is open, as well as the order itself is open but I might want to loop through and close all of these lines. So if I push close order, it's going to go ahead and loop through. So let me show you a little bit of how this works and we're going to, we're going to build this ourselves. So first thing I want to show you is the tables. I basically have uh, you know, an order table and these are the linked lines just using linked records and a status here. And here are the lines. Each line is created with its linked order and it has a status. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this loop. So I'm going to create a new button here and let's write set status to hold. That's what we're going to do here. And what I like to do when I create loops is make a little uh, a little group called functions. And we'll add a new step here and we'll call this uh, loop to hold. And we'll bring it over here. So now it's all grouped nicely in this functions thing. And what we're going to do is when you press the set status to hold button, we're going to initiate the loop. So initiate the loop. And first let's make sure someone has a you know an order selected. So it's not blank. And then what we're going to do is we're going to store that current order, it has a list of order lines. Now this is an array. <clears throat> and that's important because we're going to loop through that array. We're going to store that to a variable. And I'm going to call this variable working array. It's just something I call it, but you might call it looping array or something like this. This is the array we're going to do the work to. And then we're going to go to our step, which is the loop to hold step. And that's all we have to do to initiate the loop. And now we're going to go on that looping step. And all the work happens on step enter. So let's go to the on step enter and we'll say loop to hold. And what we want to do is we want to check to see that working array. We're going to see if it's uh, empty or not, if it has anything in it. So if it has something in it, we're going to basically pull something out of it and then work on that thing. And then we're going to just make that list smaller every time. So what we'll do is we'll check the length. So if the length of the variable working array and we have to make it a string here. So we're going to add this little plus uh, apostrophe apostrophe. So now it's a string. If the length is greater than a static value, which is going to be 0, then we're going to do our stuff. So what are we going to do? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull something off of that. So array, pop from array. We're going to pull from the working array, and we're going to store it in a variable, which is the working item. So we're just cutting one off every time. And then we're going to load up our table record. Here you can do anything you want, but in our example, we're going to load up the table record with the working item. We're going to put that into the current line. And then we're going to go ahead and do work to it. So let's just, in this case, we're going to store a static value, which is hold into the current line status. And then that's really all we're doing here. So this is where the loop happens. We're just going to go back to itself. So if there's nothing left here, then we want to end the loop. So what are we going to do here? You can do all the things that you would do at the end of the loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the status of the order to hold. Because we only want to do this once. And then we're also going to go back to where we were. So we'll go back to our main step. And that's the whole loop. A lot of times people like to put, you know, we can put a little, uh, a little image here of a timer. So this might be fun. You can put this here just so people can see, you know, that they should wait for a second. We can make this thing blink. And that's the whole application. So let's run it and let's see what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and run this thing. So create a new order, add some lines, and then we'll set status to hold. And that's how looping works. Hope that was a helpful tip. Thanks.